Do you often find yourself aiming like this? He moves like Naruto! Hi, I'm Zapper and I am an Immortal 3 in Valorant. In this video, I'm going to give you an in-depth breakdown of how I developed my aim. And while this video's focus is primarily going to be about aiming on Valorant, it can be applied to any FPS game of your choosing. Hopefully by the end, your aim will be looking more like this. Key number one is to practice. In order to develop your aim, it is fundamental that you practice. When I first began my aim training journey, I was training one hour a day every morning. I continued doing this until my aim reached a level I was comfortable with. During this time, I was obsessed with aiming and I was scouring the internet for different tips and tricks. However, I found the most progress when I was focused during my training. So if you continue watching this video and you have heard and tried implementing lots of these tips already, but saw little or no progress, I would recommend trying to focus more on your focus while training. Key number two is your eyes. The eyes are the key. I don't know why this isn't preached more in aiming guides and I feel like not enough of you guys are doing or even know about this. Some of you are probably wondering about where to look when aiming and others have probably never even thought about it before. I know I used to be that way. I have personally found that looking at the target when aiming is optimal. I originally took interest in this topic from a really well made video by Otter. A link of his video will be in the description. But we're going to start where it all begins, the eye. Because what good is your hand being perfectly synced with your vision if your eyes can't properly follow the target? Essentially, when focusing on the target with your eyes while aiming, it's extremely useful for a number of reasons. Number one, you are more intensely looking at the target so your brain can better analyze the movement of the target, which in turn helps with your tracking. Number two, your visual reaction time is faster. And number three, you train your brain to subconsciously aim your crosshair to where you are looking. I personally believe that people that have a natural talent in aiming do this automatically. Once I started implementing this, aiming instantly felt a little easier and more simple. If you are not doing this, I definitely recommend trying it out and actively focusing on the target with your eyes while aiming. Key number three, crosshair placement. Crosshair placement is talked about a lot, so I'll keep it brief. Essentially, with good crosshair placement, not only will aiming be easier, because you are on average closer to the target at the start of each gunfight, but also you will get kills quicker. If there is less distance that your crosshair has to travel to reach the target, your crosshair will reach the target quicker. Obviously not having to move your crosshair at all to reach the target is optimal. Keeping your crosshair at head height is good as many of you know, but keeping your crosshair the correct distance away from the angle is even more important from my experience. I have heard some creators try to explain when you should hold for a wide swing, or when you should hold for a close swing. But personally, I don't think there are any metrics that can accurately teach you when to hold for each peak. That's because if a player is playing correctly, they should be able to peak the angles in unexpected ways, especially if they know your position. There is one situation that is fairly common though. When you're holding an off angle and they do not expect you, then you can usually hold wider because in this situation, they will usually not clear you. I will say that even in this situation, it's not guaranteed to work. A general rule of thumb is that you want your crosshair to be as close to the enemy as possible, not necessarily the second they appear on your screen, but the second you react to them being on your screen. This of course applies to peaking angles as well. Key number four, movement and how it affects your aim. Movement plays a surprising factor while aiming. I think that this is why so many movement guys have been coming out recently. However, I feel there are a few elements of movement that don't get brought up as frequently, so here they are. Number one, when you move, your crosshair moves. I found this isn't something that you really have to focus on unless you spend a lot of time in aim trainers as I did, in which you may notice that aiming while moving is significantly harder. Recognition of this issue can help and even doing exercises that Wuhujin recommends can help a lot. Number two, if you are moving with just one movement key, you will be moving faster than if you're holding two. So if you are dying instantly and don't have time to react and aim, it may be because you are peaking incorrectly. Number three, I personally don't think crouch spraying is as bad as everyone says because many pros use this strategy however it's important to not use it as a crutch because there are many situations where you lose control of your spray and no amount of mouse control can allow you to hit your shots i think strafing in between bursts of two to three bullets is the best because it allows your spray to reset and gives you the opportunity to have like accurate shots again many people talk about how hard it is for you to get hit while doing this but personally i still kind of get killed instantly a lot of the time while doing it and I'm sure a lot of you have noticed it too after trying it out. And you know, my movement is still something I'm working on. And while it does help, it's not going to make you unkillable. I just feel, felt the need to mention this because it's low key. I low key got the impression that like you're kind of unkillable from like watching a lot of these movement guides. But in all reality, like it does help and it does make you a better player if you're doing this, but it doesn't make you unkillable. All right, key number five, positioning, angle advantage, timings. 
This part of the video is, is more where we stray away from aiming a little bit to other factors that might make you feel like you have bad aim, when in actuality you're just like taking bad gunfights. This section will be brief because they are all a part of bigger topics that I'll need more time to explain. However, I just want you to all understand that there are factors outside of your aim that can result in your aim feeling bad. Once you get an understanding of this, you can usually feel that you are just in a bad situation. But I believe if you don't previously have knowledge of these concepts, it would be pretty easy to just blame aim. I personally would blame all of my mistakes on aim when I first started playing FPS games. So I just wanted to help you guys out just in case you guys are doing the same. Essentially, if the enemy knows your position or they are expecting you to peek, you have a much lower odd of winning the gunfight. And you should probably wait for your team, use some form of utility or reposition to a better location. One other thing to note, many of you know this already, but if you're further away from the angle, you will see the enemy first. When peeking angles, this is somewhat negated because of ping. However, I feel like it's an important concept to understand just because because there are lots of situations where you can get shot before even seeing the enemy. That about wraps it up for this video. And if you guys want, I can even make like a guide of like how I used Kovacs, etc. and how I used Deathmatch. But for the most part, this guide should help you like improve quite a bit. Feel free to reach out. I'll be making more guys in the future. Peace. God damn, bro, you're so good. No